Creating game art using Procreate. Does it work? Is it annoying? Do I recommend it? That is what we're going to discuss and try and answer in this video. I've created almost all the art on this channel exclusively using Procreate on my 11 inch iPad Pro. This includes both my animations and all my other assets. This will be a mix between talking about the features of Procreate and covering my workflow and how I draw using it. So even if you have no intention of using Procreate, you still might find something interesting. So we're going to draw this simple scene and I'll show my process for using the iPad and some of its downsides. So to start our scene, I'm gonna show you a feature that I've personally never used. We can take a picture of something we have lying around, take a photo of it, and now I can import a color palette from that photo. So we'll try and make our scene using these colors. The biggest reason I use the iPad is that the drawing experience is better than any other tablet I've ever used. And so we'll start by talking about the drawing workflow. There are a lot of things that make the drawing experience excellent, but I'll start by mentioning one feature that is a real time saver in terms of drawing, which is auto-adjusted lines. If you draw any type of random scribbly line and then hold your pen still, it will auto-adjust those lines to what it calls a polyline. And we can press edit and adjust it if it isn't perfect. So to illustrate how you can use this feature, let's start by drawing some clovers, but sort of square. I'm just going to make a random shape that I sort of want to follow. And we add another layer, and then we draw some wobbly lines around. And then we hold our pen still. And it automatically just makes all the lines completely straight. Once we're done, we can look at our palette, pick one of the colors, and then just sort of drag and drop it. Then we add the magic wand onto our layer, add another layer, and draw highlights. Add another for shadows, and then we're done. That didn't take me much more than five minutes. So we can see here that the basic workflow in Brocade can be extremely efficient. I don't have to redraw lines very often. I just bucket drop a color, and I can mark an area to ensure that I draw within the lines, and then I'm done. We can do the same thing for curves. You can draw any type of somewhat curved line, and even if it's wobbly, as long as you hold your pen still afterwards, it will auto-adjust to a nice smooth curve. So let's make something like a moss platform. And you can see how these curved shapes turn out really well. Then we can make another bush and add circles to look like berries. Just draw a ball, and if I put my finger on the iPad, I get a perfect circle. And so we can make this weird bush using the same method. So for my situation, why I think this is so important is that it makes it so that I can produce all my art just a little bit faster. But it would also be helpful if you have trouble drawing your shapes or lines comfortably. In my case, the touch functionality really offers the same thing. You will generally have some directions where you can draw really confident lines. And so by rotating the canvas, I can do this movement almost perfectly every time. So I will rotate the canvas as much as possible to draw the lines in my preferred way. While rotating the canvas does work with a tablet like this or this, I really feel that without the touch functionality, it doesn't feel the same. The line quality is excellent, but nowadays the line quality is excellent on almost all devices, including this $70 Huion tablet. Before I move on to talk about the features of Procreate, I quickly want to mention how convenient using the app and the iPad to draw is. We can take all of our assets and create a stack, so that we know that they belong to the same scene, sort of like a folder, and then we can export them together. This part is one of the nicer things with having an iPad and Procreate. All your art is always just there. You don't need to start the program and wait. It all opens in an instant and never lags when drawing. When it comes to features, generally it has most of the things that you would want. You can mark an area, invert the selection, or transform what you selected. Do note that transforming is a bit destructive. So if you do it too much, your art will become blurry. Which we can see here if I take this asset, twist it and turn it, and change it. We can see that the line art is not as sharp as the original, so use it with caution. These type of transformations will always be destructive regardless of program, but in my subjective experience it feels sometimes as if Procreate is more destructive than programs like Krita or Photoshop. We can also add grid lines, which is kind of necessary if you want to do pixel art or tiles. And we can also see here that there are grid lines for isometric and stuff like that. This grid line feature is helpful, but somewhat underpowered. Programs like Aceprite will have assist tools that will help you get seamless repeatable assets. I can somewhat fake this in OBS. You can see here how easy it would be for me to create a seamless tile if I could see exactly how it lines up. But in Procreate, you can only mirror the lines on one axis. So in my workflow, I will generally use the grid to ensure that I match my tile size, but I will rarely make exact tiles. If you have 3D assets that you want to import and paint on, you can do that as well. Procreate basically supports the essential tools that you need to do game art, but not much more. But it implements these things really well. There's some adjustments here, such as HSL, color balance, and curves. The adjustments here are significantly worse than what you would get with something like Affinity. But you can get quite far just using HSL and the curves, which can help you adjust both contrast and the colors. 
On top of this, we also have the smudge tool, which can help you blend, if that is the style you're going for. I personally never do any complex blending, because it takes time. I just use a soft blend airbrush, and then make the brush really large compared to my asset. And then I draw one quick sweep across the asset. This will almost simulate a gradient, and is quick to use. There's some cool features with blending, but often this type of texture work takes an immense amount of time to get done. And I basically never use lowered opacity on my brush for the same reason. Shading takes time. I want to be able to apply my brush once and be done. And if you feel like your drawing takes too long, I would try and adopt a style where you can do that too. I'll quickly mention brushes, but I'm generally not a brush focused type of person. But I have a few standard brushes that I've grouped. I basically force myself to only use these brushes. This one is for all my lines. And then I have a few other ones that I use for textures. The reason for this is that if you change brushes too much, it increases the risk that you create something that looks like a different style. So setting something like a brush limitation can force you to work with what you have, and not test new stuff when you already have a style that is quick and easy to produce. The syrup brush is kind of quirky in that it feels like it drifts behind the brush when you paint. The benefit of this is that it removes a lot of the jitters that your hand might produce, and so you're more likely to get the line that you wanted on the first try. The syrup brush is the only type of brush I feel like I haven't encountered before. In general, I feel like most programs have decent brushes, so you'll probably be happy with brushes regardless of the program you use. So now we have gone over a lot of the features and how I draw. We have drawn small clovers, a bush with small circular berries, a bush-like ground to walk on, a platform, and a tree. So let's look at my workflow with implementing and transferring assets, which is one of the things I hate the most with this thing. I have a PC, and transferring files from the iPad to the computer is absolutely horrible. I have this USB stick, and when I transfer the files, Quite often my files get corrupted and I have to redo the whole thing, because iPad doesn't have a safe eject as far as I can tell. I place my assets in Godot, start the scene and run around in it. And here I usually adjust the scene with the game open. So I try to look to which assets I feel are the main problem. This one and this one definitely need to be changed. And I also think they're pretty good to draw another one, so we'll do that. And I add the USB stick again, transfer all the files. Then in Godot I just replace the source file with the new copies, and my scene gets updated. Back and forth I do this. The exact workflow that I go through here will kind of depend on what I'm doing. For videos like this, I'll usually want to experiment, so I don't go into the project with any real expectations. So in this case, I started with a certain color palette and drew my assets a specific way. But as you saw, when I put this in Godot, it was kind of bad. So for these videos, I'll experiment a lot. I decide to go over all the assets with slightly thicker lines, and then use the polyline adjustment to make the entire scene use straight lines. Then on top of it, I also played around with a new color palette. Whenever I work on my actual project, I would just follow my design doc, so I wouldn't deviate on line thickness or color palette. Those are already set and can't change without causing problems. After going over all the assets, I would plug the assets back into Godot. I will with this initial setup start looking at getting a feel for the scene and what it needs. So I'll push the foreground assets to be darker and adjust the placement of the assets a bit. And here we can see that they generally start with fewer assets than I need, and then go back and add depending on how the scene looks. So here I will identify that the background is flat, so I'll go back and make some rocks and some trees. And we can see here one of the big problems that arises if you don't have a design doc of any sort. If you for instance don't write a constraint for your line thickness, you can easily draw a tree, place it in your scene, and then realize the thickness is way too small compared to your other assets. So when you place it in your scene, it will look off, and then you have to go back. And here I can showcase another quite nice feature of Procreate. You can set commonly used line thicknesses to ensure these types of things can be easily kept consistent. So you can see here that most of what I do is quite simple. I've gone over in a previous video how I usually work with layers. I have a base layer, a shadow layer, a highlight layer, and then my line art. I often keep this type of structure so that I can adjust the shadows and line art separately. We can see here, for instance, that I alpha lock my layer by pressing it on the layer, and now everything that I draw will only affect where I've drawn previously. So I can go over all my black line art and shift it to make the scene more cute rather than dark and gloomy. And in the end, we can go all in in this direction and just make the entire scene pink and cute. The fact that you don't draw and save your files in the same place really does slow down this process a bit. So let's lastly talk about animation in Procreate. The second worst part with Procreate for game development is probably the animation features. So let's pull up my animation for my character. Here it is, 4k by 4k. And I obviously export this character later on in something like 128 by 128 pixels. I'm going to be updating this and adjusting it quite soon. But here it is. In Procreate, your animation is basically just different layers that you can flip between. And then some onion skinning. Which is essentially what you need to do animation. 
but this easily becomes really clogged. You want your line art and your colors to be on separate layers so that you can change them separately. And I generally also have a separate layer for the head because I don't change the head in between frames. So I need to group these layers and have them be viewed as one frame. And then if I want to work on only one or two frames, I have to hide these other ones. Pan through all of this and it's just a bit messy having it structured like this compared to something like Krita. But as I said, the drawing experience on this is excellent. And I'm just a bit more comfortable doing the drawing in Procreate where I have the brushes I'm used to. So I have to live with animation features. So now to the question, do I recommend the iPad for doing game dev? Well, since I have a Microsoft Surface, a pen display, a tablet, and an iPad, I could do a full comparison between all these drawing devices and who I think each one is for. But basically, if you do 2D hand-drawn art like I do, so no 3D or pixel art, then I personally think the drawing experience is both fun and great with Procreate. And that really helps you enjoy the process more and thus create more. If you have a Mac with AirDrop, then it would also remove some of the hassle of transferring files. If I was doing 3D pixel art or something like my thumbnails or illustration, then I would be using a computer. But for the stuff I do on this channel, the iPad is in my opinion the best. If you have something that you want me to cover, it could be the art of a specific game or something that you would like to learn more about. Feel free to comment down below. Or you could watch this video that YouTube thinks that you would like. Thanks for watching. Bye.